good morning, everyone. For those of you that haven't met me before, my name is George Smith, and I have the pleasure of serving as the director of MSU Ag Bio Research. And in that role, I lead the research enterprise for the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources and for the bulk of Michigan State University in the areas of agriculture, food systems, and natural resources. I have the opportunity of helping facilitate the work of over 300 faculty dedicating to doing a work that will make a difference for our agriculture community and people who live in the state of Michigan in the short term and the long term. And it's really a pleasure to be here today and be part of this program where you get updates on the all the exciting things that are happening in our teaching, research, and outreach programs in Derry at Michigan State University. So I have the pleasure about talking about a new development that we can't be more thrilled about that really has the opportunity to lay the foundation to enhance that impact of our teaching, research, and outreach programs for, for generations to come. And that's our new dairy facility project. And so when I have the opportunity to talk to stakeholders, I always like to reflect on what got me to where I am today and what makes my job special, what makes Michigan agriculture special. And that's the partnerships that our agricultural groups, general farm organizations and Michigan State University, when they come together on our behalf, really enhance agriculture. I am a product of one of those par partnerships. I see some people in the room that have been around for a little while and remember this, the Animal Agriculture Initiative in the late 80s and 19, early 1990s. That was a grassroots effort by the agriculture community coming together to advocate to the state of Michigan for an investment in animal agriculture, in infrastructure and in personnel. Over 20 faculty positions, and I was one of those faculty positions hired as a result of that initiative. So that makes my role working with our faculty and on behalf of Michigan agriculture even more and more special to me. And it wouldn't happen if it wasn't for those partnerships between the entire agricultural community. And this project I'm going to talk to you about today is really another example of that. So I won't spend a lot of time talking about the need. I think you're all familiar with the need. I have the opportunity to talk to producers, folks in the industry, multiple generations say, yeah, when I was at Michigan State and I went through the program, the dairy was old then. And then, and then my kids went through the program and it was old then. But the good news is there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And with the support of the agricultural industry, we're going to have new, new state-of-the-art facilities. We state-of-the-art facilities for the dairy industry in the state of Michigan to address problems of now and the future. So basically, the, the long and the short of the story is for fiscal year 23, there was $53 million dollars invested on behalf of Michigan State Agriculture, coming from the Michigan State Government, invested at Michigan State University to allow us to dramatically transform our facilities for our greenhouses, which are directly linked to all of agriculture, including, including your industry work on feed crops and things like that, and our dairy facilities that were much badly, badly needed. And we couldn't be more thrilled. So the first thing I wanna do is thank you all our industry partners who helped make that happen. It was not, wasn't because of the efforts of myself and others at Michigan State. It was because of the industry, industry support. Producers and you know various organizations, Michigan Milk Producers, Dairy Farmers of America, UDIM, Farm Bureau played a big role in this and you all are the ones that made it happen. So the first thing I wanna do is say thank you. And we are committed to delivering on this investment and make sure it positions the dairy programs at Michigan State University to have a long-standing impact for decades to come. So the good news, $53 million to help renovate our greenhouses and build a new dairy facility. Transformational investment, the foundation of what, of, of what we need to get this done. But we have bigger goals and a bigger vision. So we, we are committed to delivering on the vision that was articulated to the industry, articulated to our industry partners, and articulated to the legislature in terms of building that facility that's state of art to allow us to deliver on our mission. So we, are, we do have some more money to raise and we're working on that. We appreciate the support of the agriculture community and I'm com committed to making sure we get it done. So let's talk a little bit about what's planned to date. Before I do that, I need to really thank three people who have been instrumental in this planning effort. 
I just kind of paved the way at the university level. But the folks that made this happen, that really had the vision, are the faculty and our extension educators. And three people really played a key role in planning for the new facility. That's Barry Bradford, Dr. Annette O'Connor from the Department of Large Animal Clinical Sciences, where she's the chair, and Dr. Wei Liao from the Department of Biosystems and Agriculture Engineering. So the vision you're gonna hear about today, it's not my vision, it's their vision, and translated, hopefully it's a vision that you all can embrace and kind of recognize how this facility will help us meet your needs now and into the future. So current status, we've got about 225 cows. Do a lot of research like you heard from, from Derry, do some teaching activity like Joe talked about, some outreach programs. The facility's not big enough. Our faculty do a lot of research on commercial farms, but given the nature of some of the work like Barry described, you just can't do that on a commercial farm. So the plans are to go from 225 cows to, to 700 cows. Will allow us dramatically to increase our research in, throughput, have a better facility for teaching students, particularly those that haven't been exposed to dairy before, and a facility when the public comes through for programs like Ron talked about that we can all be proud of. So the vision for this is have modern milking systems, cooling, lighting, wiring, et cetera. I won't give you the laundry list of all the things that we wish were better on the old dairy. The good news is we have the opportunity to build a new dairy. So we anticipate being able to go to 700 cows without an increase in staffing. So that's gonna help our bottom line as well in terms of um, keeping the facility operational. And again, to emphasize the partnerships. This, this isn't ag bio research, it's not extension, it's, it's everyone. And most importantly, it's a partnership between the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources and the College of Veterinary Medicine because they also, CVM also sees the need for this facility to enhance their research capacity and training that next generation of veterinarians. And I think we would all like more veterinary students to be interested in dairy. So having a modern facility to take them out on when it's their first exposure, I think can really make a difference there. So some of the key plan, plan features, um, research equipment to allow free house cows to re receive specific diets and measure feed intake. Those of you who have been in the facility know we have tie stalls. That's a reflection of when it was built. Has some utility for our nutrition programs, but there is new technology to collect the type of data that Barry and others need without cows having to be in tie stalls, you know, at a much higher throughput. Again, the goal for this facility is to facilitate research and to facilitate teaching. So there will be a 120 cow robotic milking barn that will allow undergraduate students to manage cows and equipment, help with our at providing cows for our veterinary students as well, and exposing our students to both robotic and traditional milking systems. And again, a big part of the vision for this facility as well, and I think what helped sell it to our legislators was trying to address some of the environmental sustainability issues that we are now important to you all. I tell people all the time when I talk to the legislators, our dairy farmers care about the environment, and they do but we need new tools and new technologies to provide some solutions to, to help them both be more profitable and deal with some of the environmental sustainability issues. And this slide, which was generated by Dr. Wei Lau in the, in the Department of Biosystems and Agriculture Engineering, articulates a little bit of the vision from the environmental sustainability side, what the goals are from a research, teaching and an outreach perspective to try to, to provide some new options so central to this is the concept of getting revenue for what comes out of the back of the cow. And part of that is anaerobic digestion. Anaerobic digestion, as you all know, isn't a new technology, but the goal is to make it more broadly applicable, maybe to scale at different size dairies and to provide new markets for the renewable natural gas or the electricity that's generated. Weilau is a world leader in that area. It's fundamental to our vision for the future. And I, and I think we're gonna be successful and developing some new options that'll be practical on farm. Second piece of this, which we're really excited about, is the nutrient recovery piece, how to cover, pull the nutrients out of manure. This one really, when we talk to legislators and folks about this and the potential, you know, record high fertilizer prices, heavily dependent on importing nutrients from other countries, Ukraine, Russia, et cetera, we can be a little more self-sufficient, not gonna solve the whole problem, 
of Polo's nutrients out of the manure and develop a market for our producers, you know, that opens opportunities too and would, you know, alleviate some of the issues with application on land. And then talking beyond that, I won't get into a lot of the details. There's also a vision for doing research on greenhouse gas emissions and carbon footprint. We believe there isn't good data to really substantiate what the carbon footprint is on dairy farms, conventional dairy farms. That's our role to generate that data across the whole production cycle and be able to look at the impact of treatments, how you, how you, how you raise the food crops, how you feed the cows, what you feed the cows, and have the, that actual data and to compare it to our, our pasture-based dairy at, at, at Kellogg Biological Station. There's a lot of, you know, we all know the narrative going on out there about the importance about greenhouse gas emissions, but, you know, the impact that cows and dairy farms really have, that's an open question in my mind, and we want to be positioned to address those, those questions for you all. So a little bit more of the plans and details of where we're at with the project. Big question we get asked all the time is where are you going to put it? So the good news is our administration told us we need to build on South Campus. And to be honest with you, when we got that news, I was a little bit shocked because we have a neighbor right next door in McLaren Hospital. So it would have been easy for upper administration to say, hey, find a site an hour, two hours away, whatever, go build your dairy, that's great. They didn't do that. They said it needs to be on campus because it's better for our students and it's better for our researchers. So that presents an opportunity for us having a hospital next door to sort of educate the public as well. So we got some challenges, not having quite as a large enough land mass to pull that off, but actually we're really excited about the opportunity from a programmatic perspective and all the things you heard about from these gentlemen, it's, it's gonna work well for us. So the plan is to build just south of the current facility. And you can see on the map here where the current facility is and, what we have planned for the new facility, you know, and what we want to incorporate, you know, still free stall access, um, but the vision like we talked about, a robotic milking, conventional milking, these feed research tubs, that's the technology we talked about to do those nutrition studies and whatnot. So that's where we're at in terms, terms of planning, where it's going to be, what it's going to look like, but a lot is, is still remains to be worked out. Again, this isn't Michigan State's facility. This is a, a facility to meet the needs of the dairy industry in the future. So we welcome your input, your, your comments, your suggestions to make sure we do it right. And we are positioned to meet your needs in the future. So the big question we get asked all the time, and it's a really, really tough one, but we're gonna do our best to line things out for, for you in terms of when we think we might be able to actually break ground and have the facility completed. Things are a little bit more complicated doing this on a university campus than it would be for you all out, out in, in the private sector. But nevertheless, here's, here's where we're at. So the funding was approved and in, in, approved in part of the 2023 budget available in October. We went through a process with our board of trustees to get you know, all the I's dotted, the T's crossed, official approval. We had to hire an architect and an engineering firm to work with us. The faculty group I talked about and with broader input from our faculty and stakeholders developed a plan. We did a preliminary study, but we had to hire an architecture and engineering firm to really translate that study and what it looks like in terms of the buildings and actual costs. So we, we just hired a firm to help us with that. We're actually gonna have the first meeting of the phase two of planning, the final stage of planning starting next week. And, and Barry and others are gonna do the best to keep you informed and gather input as this process goes forward. So that's gonna take a little while. We're gonna do our due diligence, but be aggressive. And so we hope that we can get that planning process done by the end of the year and go back to the Board of Trace Trustees for approval. That's the funding plan, that's the details. And then, then we have the green light to start construction. We're hopeful quarter one of 2024, those shovels will be in the ground and we'll start working on this new facility. Hope to have it done by the end of 2025. And then you can see the anticipated timeline for moving cows, beginning to demolition of existing buildings where our feed infrastructure will, will be placed. Lots of details still to be worked out, 
but I couldn't be more excited about this project. And uh, we really think it's gonna make a big difference for you all. And we hope at the end of the day, when it's done, you can also be proud of that facility. And, and we can all celebrate the great work that be conducted there for decades into the future. Thank you. So we have about 20 minutes left and love to field questions from you all about that project, about the program as a whole, and we're all available to help answer those. So let's open the floor. Does anyone have a, a lead off question for us? Go ahead, Barry. There you go. Oops. This one? Yeah. So innovation centers. There are innovation centers. I mean, we're looking at, we got other industries looking at making way in the box up. We've got, we got 19 times line to fix your phone in your pocket. You got a wine industry. If you take 19 times line, hold your phone and download the app, pull it out. The guy will tell, talk to me about the mom. Right? He tells me where those great came from and how it was made. So with an innovation center, why can't we get that on a jug? I'm a producer. What happens if it says, hey, I'm a family farm, I sell 300 cows, thanks for buying my product. In October, when we went to Kansas City for the federal milk marketing order, we were all told that milk lost its best friend. What's milk, food milk's best friend? Cereal. The innovation center has to come up, you have to have one, so that we can come up with something that people are gonna be able to hand their kids, jump in the car and take them to school. It's gotta be fast. And we're not, we've gotta be innovative. I just had breakfast yesterday with, with a dean, telling them, no, no, you haven't met her, you gotta be down to earth, she's a great person. She told us, you know, the Farm Bureau group, but she told us that this dairy is gonna be world known, worldwide. We need a visitor center, we need an innovation. You're about 50 million short, right? We got 23, roughly, we're gonna split the 50 million between greenhouses and dairy. You're about 50 million short. So we need, you need to communicate to us as industry and as producers, how can we get you more money to make this a worldwide no facility? I, I, I'm all about, let's move on, man. Let's get her done. Yeah, so the question was focused on where's the innovation in the new facility? How do we address some of the issues that we're talking about in terms of labeling, marketing, and really what, what's taking things to the next level? I'm right there with you too. And really what we need to have is those conversations with our industry about what are the needs of the future? This is the foundation. You're right. There are going to be more funds that need to be raised. I see this as a foundation not just to enhance the work that our current faculty extension folks are doing, but how we address what are the most pressing needs for the future. And that needs to come from a dialogue with, with, with our industry. So, um, you know, part of the vision for this is also this public area outreach for the public. Some of the things you talked about, we have to convince people it's important to the industry and the type of technologies you're talking about I'm, I'm right there with you. So this is what we want to hear. We want to figure out how we can do those, those things and work together. So this is the, this isn't the end of the conversation. We need to talk more. So I appreciate where you're coming from. And we need your help in terms of context and, and ra raising funding. You've done a lot already and we wouldn't be here without you. And I greatly appreciate that, but we can't do it all on our own. So if you have ideas, if you have connections to folks in the corporate world or others that would see this, this vision and how we take dairy to the next level, we would love your help. We'd love to have a conversation together, have those contacts. So this type of feedback is absolutely critical. So we make sure that multi-generation impact we're talking about is, is realized. Thanks for this presentation. Thanks for your support. Following up on Stacy's comment, Stephanie's comment, uh, one concern that I have is the relationship between food science and animal science down the road. And, and I'm looking at, for example, we, we moved the dairy store away from food science. Is that good or bad? Uh, 
where do we see food science helping us out with the product development down the road? And that kind of follows in what Steph is saying. Yeah, so I can talk about the, the dairy store issue. It's actually managed and run by MSU Extension now. And that was from an operational perspective to help make sure that those needs can be met in the future. Ted, I think you make a great point. This, this is the start of the conversation. It's not, not the end. I think there probably is a role for food science and the vision for the future. And it's going to require those conversations with the industry and the partners as well. So... As someone, as someone from industry, I do want to commend you because what industry needs is a place where research can be done, where the cow can be the experimental unit instead of a large group. Because when you do research on commercial farms and a group becomes the experimental unit, you lose sensitivity. So what I see here is a great opportunity, because if I hear you right, you've got three stall housing, but you're going to be able to measure feed intake on individual cows and milk on individual cows. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, thanks for that point, you're right. Um, the, the point is that the value of this type of facility compared to trying to carry out stuff on a commercial farm is that you can measure data on individual animals and it gives you way more precision in making clear statements about, okay, this treatment significantly changes outcomes, right? That's exactly right. So we can use animal as our experimental unit of observation. So my question, I have a question that goes along with the, the previous question is why is it taking a year to get blueprints drawn up and present them to the state of Michigan. Can we speed that process up? You know, it's a great point and I'm right there with you and we're doing everything we can. It's a reality of working at a university and there were other things, processes that have to take place that we can't control. And I don't mean that as a cop out, cop out. I'm just being sincere with you. We're doing everything we can to expedite the process, working internally, and we've got aggressive time. We're, we're going to do what we what we need to do. But po point well taken. Thank you. So maybe I missed this. Where's the feed storage? Most of the feed storage for the new facility is going to be on the current footprint of the cow facilities now. So we, the current feed storage we have will mostly remain. Um, and obviously, we'll need more silage space. And so that's going to be when we level the current facilities and uh, re-pour concrete, that's going to be silage bed. Good morning, thanks for being here. Um, just a couple questions. Uh, one of our bigger challenges in the industry is uh, working within the NPES environmental permitting. And uh, just wondering, uh, uh, based on the 700 cows, it seems like maybe uh, this is geared to kind of stay under CAPO permitting, on CAPO status. Uh, just would like to wonder how that's gonna help uh, large producers uh, deal with environmental regulations and um, help us have a, good, a better relationship with our uh, regulating agencies. Um, and then just wondering, uh, I've got two questions. The second one would be, who is the university working with outside of the university to help with design this project? Um, there's a lot of people in this room um, that uh, we work with to design our own facilities and uh, just learn that is a consideration. Okay, you can fill in, right? 
Thanks, Tom. Good questions. Uh, so first of all, um, the 700 cow number, yes, it sounds like, or if we said 699, it would definitely sound like we're trying to like skirt under cake control rules, but, and I can understand that perception. Um, that's honestly not our objective. And we, when our first meetings with the architects or the engineers we worked with, which I'll fill you in on in a second, um, we made it very clear from the beginning, we want to meet all the regulations that any CAFO in this state would have to meet, right? And we're, we're hoping to be a show place. We don't want to be like, oh, but a, you know, a normal 2000 cow farm couldn't do this. We're not doing that. So I want to make that super clear. 700 cows. So we honestly went through some math on if everybody on campus that wants to do, for example, transition cow research was actually going to be able to do research at the rate that we can get funded, how many cows do we need? And that's kind of the number we came up with. And after we went through the design process, the initial design process in the last year, um, the current drawings would have 700 cow slots, but some of those would be like high stalls that we'd only use for very intense studies and they're otherwise not used. So the reality is we think the normal number of lactating cows is about 500. Okay, so that's the bigger details. So anyway, we're not trying to skirt K4 rules. We're actually gonna be slightly smaller than what you hear by saying 700. Um, but another constraint on being any bigger is just flat out the land mass we have there. And we're already working on how do we deal with that? How much forage do we import? Do we look at using more dry alfalfa to make it cheaper to pull? forages in. So there's going to be a lot of headache there already, even at 500 milking cows versus 2000 would be a real, real headache uh, for nutrient management, just because we don't have a huge land base there. Okay. So that's, that's the nitty gritty there. And we can go into more detail if you want. Um, on the engineering side, um, the firm we worked with on the early plan in the last year was a firm called Curry Willie out of Ames, Iowa. They have worked with a ton of universities to do livestock research facilities so they understand ag they do some commercial stuff on nutrient management and such but they also understand universities and they're willing to deal with the paperwork and such that comes with that um, and and that mixture is a little bit hard to find and I, I think we've been actually pretty pleased with their work they're actually helping design the new USDA dairy forage research center near Madison as well um, so and what our planning people have worked out now with George's advice, I think, is that that group will stay on in the next phase of the project and actually probably carry 60% of the weight in, in the final design. But we also have an overall architect. So they'll work as a team and the overall architect firm, uh, can I say who that is now? <laughs> it's a firm called Tower Pinkster out of Green Rapids, right? Yeah. And um, so there'll be more front of house design like the visitor center, um, they'll, they'll focus more on that in the office spaces, whereas Curry Willie will be the lead on the animal spaces. And I also learned in the last month, which I'm really happy to hear, that there are mechanisms to allow uh, even Curry Willie to, to lean on expertise from people who build commercial dairies in the state. So um, I don't know exactly how that, how they get pulled in as a consulting team, but that's also allowed and that will be part of the plan moving forward. Fill, fill in or correct anything. Oh, I think you nailed it. Okay. Does that answer your question, Tom? Yeah. What's the university's commitment? If you got $53 million. What, has the university stepped up and said, hey, we'll give X million dollars to the area? It's a great question. We're working on that. We're hopeful there will be a, quick, a, a commitment, but I can't tell you what that is yet. So we're going to do everything we can to advocate for that. I personally feel there is a responsibility for the university to have some skin in the game. We do in terms of our funding for Magbio Research and the college, we're going to support it. So that's to be determined. But I have to say with our new interim president in the position she's in, who understands, gets our mission and what we're doing, I'm much more hopeful that this is going to be possible than I would have been in the fall. And, and back to your other comment, if, if I might, talking about traceability and those type of things. It, it's really a great idea. And I wanna emphasize another point. This facility isn't just about animal science, CBM, biosystems and agriculture engineering. We need to take those ideas and do the work to put them into, in, into practice and see if they'll work. So we have a world-class packaging program. So you talk about sensors and being able to have a barcode on a, you know, uh, 
gallon of milk or whatever, where it gets you an image of the farm it absolutely, absolutely came from. We have the potential to do that. We have, we'll have to have folks involved in agriculture, food and research economics as well to look at all the data, all the programs that developed and see, does it pencil out? What does it mean for the bottom line for our producers? So this is the catalyst for broader conversations beyond just the departments we mentioned. And we need your ideas.